for that uh, warm introduction, Michael. And uh, also, I was very pleased to see that you acknowledge the traditional owners. It's something that we do at Victoria University before all of our major ceremonies and events. And, and uh, on important occasions, we actually have a, an Aboriginal elder come and do the welcome to, to country, as they did just before a conference that I opened last week. Um, I do uh, want to thank you for the invitation to come and, and speak to you this afternoon. Usually on Sunday afternoons, I'm walking around behind my cattle, trying to make sure they go in the, in the right paddock, but this is a far more interesting occasion. I appreciate the opportunity. I also wanted to thank you again for the great honour that you bestowed on me last year as Castle Reason of, of the Year. It was, uh, it was fantastic, and you are ahead of the, uh, the people from the Order of Australia, because... Cassie's got in first, and then, of course, they saw the honour that you gave me and they decided to get in on the act as well. So, thank you. I'm sorry I missed the, the uh, award ceremony this year. Um, we were travelling, but anyway, uh, I'll try and make it next year. And can I also say thank you to the committee for matching my donation to the, the scholarship fund for Greek students, hopefully of, uh, of Castoresian descent, um, or, or from Rhodes, uh, who come to Victoria University. So thank you for, for joining that, uh, that great cause. I asked Nick what I should talk about when he gave me the, the uh, invitation to, to come and speak. And he said, well, just tell them your story. Now, Michael's told, them, told us your story, so I'm not sure what else I can add. But I thought, as you saw from the photograph in the, in the notice, that one of the things I could talk about is football. And I'm assuming that everybody here is interested in some way or another in, in football. And, and surprisingly enough, footy has actually interwoven itself through many aspects of my professional life. So to the extent that uh, I'm going to follow your instructions, Nick, and, and talk about myself, it'll, it'll have a major football theme to it. And of course, as you all know, quite recently, I had uh, the biggest thrill that I've had in, in football, the team that I followed for 62 years, that I was a director of for 13 years, that I've been a, uh, a sponsor of for about 25 years, finally broke through and won its second premiership. And um, you know, it, it's amazing how popular both footy and that grand final uh, are in, in Melbourne. How many people went to the grand final, by the way? <laughs> Two. How many watched it on TV? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, just, about, just about everybody. Th did you know that that, uh, that grand final is the, the, um, the final game, the single final game, that is, it's not part of a series, of any major professional league in the world that has the highest attendance? 100,000 people, and this is regular, every year, you know, more than the Super Bowl, more than the, uh, the FA Cup in, in England, more than all of those major events, our little city here has the highest attended finals game in a major league in the world. Not only that, the, the average attendance at footy games in, uh, in, in Australia, and this is after we've let in... GWS and Gold Coast and even the teams from Adelaide. Anyway, it, even after letting those expansion teams in, 33,000 people per game attend Aussie Rules football games. And that, that puts us fourth in the ladder of average attendance of professional, uh, professional games of all kinds around the world behind uh, the National Football League in America, just behind the Premier League in the UK, and just behind <clears throat> the Bundesliga in Germany. And we are number four. So it is, it's a, it's a popular game. Everybody wants to go to the, the grand final. Um, you know, they fight for tickets and, and they're sold out and so on. And, I appreciated this when I was sitting next to, to uh, a, a Swans supporter at, uh, at the grand final. 
Uh, Jill was there, and we were surrounded by footy, by, by uh, Bulldog supporters, but uh, there was this guy with his swan scarf, and he had a vacant seat next to him. So this was just before the game started. And I said, look, what's going on here? There's a vacant seat next to you. You know, the place is packed. There'll be 100,000 people here. And he said, look, um, there usually isn't a vacant seat because my wife and I have been coming to every Swans grand final game that they've been in for the last few years. But um, this year she couldn't make it because she died. And, uh, and I said, well, hang on just a minute. What's going on here? You know, there's, there's a vacant seat next to you. Couldn't you give the ticket to one of your relatives or one of her friends or children or whatever? And he said, well, no one wanted it because they're all at the funeral today. <laughs> now, some of you who watch the game on, on, uh, on TV might have noticed that when the coach was being interviewed, there was a little old man with a dark hat and a pair of sunglasses jumping around and his bulldog said, well, that was me. I was fortunate enough to get on the ground and uh, share in the celebrations of, uh, of our team. And I can tell you, it, it, was a, it was a great thrill. So the question is, well, how did I get there? What was it that led to this incredible experience of being part of the celebrations of, uh, of, a, of a grand final win? It sort of happened by accident because my family, or my mother and, and my brother and I, arrived in Australia in 1952. By 1954, I had learned just enough English to appreciate the fact that I had to have a footy team. The kids at school said, who's your footy team? And I said, how, how would I know? You know, I hardly knew anything about football. I said, you've got to have a football team. Many of you, I think, have been through a similar experience. So I said, well, who should I support? And they said, well, go for the top team. The top team then was Footscray. So I became a Footscray supporter. And my dad, Stamati, some of you remember Stamati quite well, took me to the second semi-final in 1954, where Footscray played Geelong, won the game, got into the grand final, won the premiership. We couldn't get tickets to the grand final, but since then, I became a, a Bulldogs, Footscray, Western Bulldogs supporter. And, um, you know, we, I persisted. I persisted for many, uh, many years, as you can imagine, even though we didn't live in Footscray. We didn't live anywhere near Footscray. We started off living in Black Rock. We lived uh, in East Brighton. We went to Malvern, Caulfield. And... Nevertheless, I hung on to my allegiance to Footscray. And that's a very different experience from the way that most people get involved with their footy teams. Because for most people, they barrack for the team that their parents barrack for, their family barrack for, or from where they live. And, and, and this was uh, something that I appreciated a little while ago. Um, I appreciated this uh, a little while ago because as part of my role as Chancellor of Victoria University, I occasionally visit our feeder high schools. So I went to St Bernard's College in, in Essendon, right in the middle of Essendon Territory, just to tell them a little bit about Victoria University, Australia's leading sports university and how we welcome kids from that part of, of Melbourne. And uh, uh, the, the uh, senior school teacher, Mrs. Watson, introduced me to her class. <clears throat> and she said, now, kids, this is Mr. Pappas, Chancellor of uh, Victoria University, um, but I want you to know he's a Bulldog supporter. <laughs> now, you know, I'm from Essendon. I'm an Essendon supporter. This is our heartland. Put up your hands all the kids who are Essendon supporters. Everybody in the class put their hands up. 
except for little Johnny Apostolides. And the teacher said, Johnny, Johnny, how come you come you're not an Essendon supporter? And Johnny said, because I'm a Bulldog supporter. Oh, said the teacher. Why are you a Bulldog supporter? And Johnny said, because my mother's a Bulldog supporter and my father's a Bulldog supporter. Teacher said, now, Johnny, Johnny, you don't always have to do what your parents do. What if your mother was a prostitute and your father was a drug dealer? And little Johnny said, then I'd be an Essendon supporter. <laughs> Sorry, Bill. So, Bill, I know how devoted you are to Essendon. And, uh, <laughs> and I was going to change the team, but anyway, I didn't have enough time to change my script. Look. Um, I guess the point I want to make is that, is that we tend to be very loyal with our footy teams and, and I hung on for many years um, and then of course I lost a bit of interest because the team was, was in decline despite the fact that we got into a grand final in 1961 almost tasted success again if it wasn't for that Brendan Edwards getting 36 kicks and tearing us to pieces but, uh, but anyway, the um, team went into a period of decline. My interest in football also went into a period of decline. I got stuck into my studies. I wasn't any very good at sport, played a little bit of hockey, but got into, stuck into my studies, made sure that uh, I was going to go to university, get a scholarship, and all that sort of stuff. Spent a lot of time with Cassie Club parties during my late teenage years. <clears throat> Went to America, got married, worked in the US and Japan, and then came back home. Came back home, and um, I discovered, I discovered that my club was in decline. It wasn't really doing all that well, financially, on the field, uh, in decline. In fact, I was so disappointed that I almost became a Collingwood supporter. You didn't know this, Chris, did you? I almost became a Collingwood supporter. But you know why I didn't become a Collingwood supporter? Someone told me Collingwood supporters are not allowed in heaven. <laughs> and I was very, very keen to go to heaven. I, I don't know if you read the story in the, in the Herald Sun. So this is during the 70s. Remember 1977, the drawn grand final? Well, a Collingwood supporter got so excited when Twiggy Dunn took the mark to, uh, to get the scores equal. He got so excited, had a heart attack and died. He went up to heaven, he had his uh, Collingwood scarf on and his Collingwood beanie and his Collingwood jumper. He met uh, St Peter, the pearly gates. St Peter looked at him and said, mate, you're not allowed in here, can't you read? There's a big sign. It says... No Collingwood supporters allowed in heaven. And this fellow was, he, he was really disappointed. He said, uh, look, I've been a, a good man. I'm a, I'm a great Catholic. I go to mass every Sunday. I go to confession. I have communion. In fact, he said, uh, three months ago, I gave $250 to St. Vincent de Paul Society. I gave $500 to uh, World Vision. I gave uh, $250 to the homeless people. I've been a good man. Can you reconsider? St. Peter said, I'll go and ask the boss. I'll tell him about you, see what he says. Five minutes later, St. Peter came back with an envelope. He gave the envelope to the Collingwood supporter, who opened it, and there was $1,000 in it. St. Peter said, I've talked to the boss. You can have your money back. No Collingwood supporters allowed in heaven. 